if anything I've ever done before has been considered niche, this video is going to blow that out of the water. I want to talk about Richard Prince's copyright transformative works and the somewhat new yet very ominous lawsuit hanging over Prince's head. Before I talk about the lawsuit, I want to build a foundation, because I assume most people watching this don't know who Richard Prince is or don't care, so allow me to explain. Richard Prince is an artist, and he's been around for a while, roughly since 1980, as that's when his first solo show was, but he's been making art since before that. Richard utilizes an artistic technique known as re-photography, which isn't exactly as sleazy as it sounds, but it's still pretty sleazy. It's basically taking a picture of somebody else's picture and cropping it or modifying it in some way to change the meaning. His most famous piece is this one, Untitled Cowboy, which was taken from a cigarette ad by Sam Abel. He's also dabbled in collage and painting, but he's known primarily for his re-photography. Now, the perceptive viewer has already seen the inherent danger of what he's doing. When the concept of your art is to appropriate the art of others, you are inviting yourself to be immediately vulnerable to lawsuits. You run a dangerous game when this is your medium, and Prince has run into more than his fair share of risky gambles. One most everyone familiar with Prince's work will remember was in 2008 when Patrick Cario sued Prince over his usage of Rastafarian images from Cario's work. In this case, the court ruled against Prince, but let's not forget the fact that this case lasted until 2011. Prince's court cases are long and bloody and require seriously taking into consideration what copyright means for an artist. So when I heard back in July that another court case had been filed due to his exhibit, New Portraits, I immediately became fascinated. So what did our boy Prince get himself into this time, the little rascal? Well, determined to push the boundaries of copyright to the breaking point, Prince screenshotted pictures on Instagram, blew them up to a larger side, and added his own comment on the bottom. This was back in 2014 when the pieces sold for an incredibly large amount of money, the only reference I could find being $36,000 for one piece. Now, artists being artists, a lot of said artists on Instagram got rather miffed at the fact that Prince's new show was basically all of their art, which led to a cease and desist, which led to a suit which was requested to be thrown out by Prince, a request which the judge denied, and now you're all caught up. So, does this case hold any water? Well, on the surface, yes. Most people would probably see what Prince did as plagiarism and call it a day. After all, it's not like Prince even cropped the images as he had done in past pieces. What's on the wall is literally what was on Instagram, plus a few lines of text. So there you go, plagiarism, case closed. Or is it? Prince definitely tried to push the boundaries here, but it isn't technically plagiarism, or at least not the way I see it. And that's with considering the fact that the pictures he lost the case for were more doctored than the pieces in new portraits. Something like this may be scummy, but there's a lot of nuance, and in order to truly understand it, we have to go over some art theory. We're going to take a look at Prince's aforementioned piece, Untitled Cowboy, and observe not what is being said on canvas, but what is being said conceptually. What is Prince trying to articulate as the idea to this piece? For the cigarette ad that this photo originally comes from, Sam Abel appropriated an iconic American image in order to sell cigarettes. Prince took a look at that and then in turn appropriated the American icon from the cigarette ad. Here, Prince is making a point on how advertisements will feed off of iconography to make the product they are advertising seem more appealing. Prince decided to remove it from the corporate context, and I think that his failure to do this is what made him eventually lose the court case against Cario. But we'll return to that later. If you ask me, the reason a piece like Cowboy doesn't stir up as much controversy is because a conceptual meaning is directly available to an onlooker, whether the conclusion they reached is what Prince intended or not. Whether or not you agree with my assessment of the image, you can probably reach your own conclusion to what it means regardless. Now again, the perceptive viewer may see the clear difference between this piece and the one Cario sued over. One was an advertisement turned fine art, and the other was fine art turned fine art. Cario's piece may have been modified by Prince, but not by much, and the meaning of the piece isn't really changed. I if anything, it seems like a juvenile attempt at vandalism. Not all that different from what you might see in a middle school yearbook. Of course, parody doesn't need to make sense, but I don't really think this even qualifies as parody. It may seem like it's poking fun at Cario's picture, but all it's really doing is attaching imagery that makes the person in the photo seem 
cool, but the original point of the photo was to have a Rastafarian be made cool and exciting as a form of drawing attention to a typically oppressed class, or at least that's how I see it. The images Prince used to augment Karyu's piece do not effectively parody the original or change the meaning, and that's especially because of the context. If this image was on a wallpaper or on a movie poster, it would be a totally different story, but this was already an art piece that probably hung in a gallery at one point before Prince took it and hung it in another gallery. The context of the piece was not changed, and that's what really makes or breaks a controversial work like this. For an example some people are more familiar with, this piece by Marcel Duchamp titled Fountain is a classic example of changing a piece not by modifying the piece itself, but by the context the piece is viewed in. Now, I could talk about this piece's influence on art for probably five more videos, and on another occasion I might, but for our purposes what's more important is how Duchamp got away with it. How did he, just by signing a name that wasn't even his, put a urinal in an art gallery and not be pelted with lawsuits? The answer is that the meaning of the piece is changed because of the context. Now, rather than being a urinal, it asks the question, is this art, and if it is, what can't be? And a whole slew of other questions that are meant to make us scrutinize our very concept of what art even is. What's the point of talking about Duchamp? Well, it's important because New Portrait is very closely related to Duchamp's fountain. Here's where all the eggs come home to I, I mean hands- I, oh my god. New Portraits is, in a way, an updated version of fountain. Again, perceptive viewers will be quick to point out, Prince is very clearly lifting from other pieces of artwork again. How is this any different from the time he stole from Karyu? Well, dear viewers, the difference is all in the context. The pieces shown in new portraits are all from Instagram. He's lifted something from the art world seen as inferior, that being internet art, and elevated it to a status of more classically famous works. The context, unlike in Karyu's piece, is completely shifted, and the comments on the bottom are not the only thing he's added. He has, very deliberately, put the frame of the piece into the artwork itself. See, the Instagram interface acts like a sort of digital frame. It separates the piece from the background, puts emphasis on the artwork, and gives it a nice border, similar to how a frame works in more traditional pieces. What Prince has done is the digital equivalent of framing the piece of art with the frame as part of the image. The focus on Instagram is clearly the piece posted by the account on the site, whereas here the focus is clearly the medium through which it is being published. Next, let's look at meaning. Does this show give these pieces any ulterior meaning. Again, it's up to interpretation, but it doesn't take much to see what Prince may have been saying with these pieces. Perhaps he is making a comment on how the new portraits and pieces of art that will be lorded as a success, treated as fine craft, will come not from obsolete galleries that he puts his own shows in, but from digital galleries such as Instagram or Tumblr instead. Now again, whether Prince thinks this is a good or a bad thing is up for debate. On one hand, he could think this is a great thing, that they're stripping down the boundaries and he's trying to get the art world to recognize the power of the net. On the other hand, he could be stating that on the net, amateur artists are lifted and given as much spotlight as the people who've worked their whole lives to develop their craft, and the internet defeats the very purpose of art societies across the world. A good debate could be made for either side, and I think the latter is definitely supported by the comments he gave on the pieces. They seem as though they're commenting, yuck yuck, on how the rich artistic debate that was cultivated in these galleries is now replaced with immature, petulant comments by random people on the internet. But you see what I did there? I was able to come up with a couple solid ideas on what these art pieces are trying to say. I read into ideas that were totally absent from the original work. Not only the art, but the artist intent and context all changed, and at the end of the day, if we're going to say that art is reliant on context, which has been one of the core ideas of modern art for a hundred years, I honestly can't say that this, this, is art theft. I just can't. A piece that facilitates such a response from people is not plagiarism. How? Ever. All that being said, Richard Prince is an asshole. And just because I don't think what he did was theft doesn't mean I don't think it's slimy, because it most certainly is. While the conversation, is the internet a less respectable place for art, is a valuable one, and one that I'd love to see happen in art societies and organizations who could stand to lose a lot of elitism, there are better and more constructive ways to do this than selling what is very nearly just other people's art. The people who made the art Prince appropriated are not of the same vein as Karyu. These aren't successful artists who shows Prince is mocking, they're amateurs. And while that fact may be one of the best reasons why New Portraits isn't theft, it also means that the people Prince took art from are people struggling a lot more than he is. 
These are artists who work very hard in a market even more competitive for people's attention than the professional art world, and rely on people to come support them by viewing their art, spreading their word, buying merch, and Prince disrupts that entire process. Sure, some of the pieces in Prince's show are of model blogs and other corporate brands, but others are actual artists struggling to be seen. Prince also appears very snide when discussing this. Scrolling through his Twitter will reveal a lot of condescending remarks, including a very odd retweet from Jerry Saltz that reads, All the crap fake artists who cry, whine, and sue other artists have no idea what art is. That copyright is dead and will die never knowing art. Which is just... <laughs> it just demonstrates Prince's true ineptitude to the social aspect of this. Like, you put other people's art up in your show, people who have to be extremely passionate about their craft, sold it for a lot of money, and then act like it's super unreasonable to be mad with him. I'd like to say that if he was in that position, he wouldn't be okay with somebody taking his art, but he probably would. He's well established, it wouldn't hurt him. This directly hurts artists who work ridiculously hard, and that's just slimy. I think Richard Prince is an interesting case to study, because I think in a world where a lot of people work in extremes, it's valuable to have something that forces you to use nuance. A lot of people would probably look at this and wrote it off as plagiarism from the word go, but to do so is to rip away so many facets of the situation. You need to look deeper to understand media, and that's what being a consumer is all about owning your tastes. So, though asshole he may be, I think Richard Prince has something to tell all of us. Even if that something is how to be an insufferable prick.